Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation, Creating the Perfect End-to-End -end IoT Solution with InfluxDB and Particle, brought to you by InfluxData. I'd like to introduce you to our presenters, David Simmons. David is the IoT Developer Evangelist at InfluxData, helping developers around the globe manage the streams of data that their devices produce. He is passionate about IoT, and helped to develop the very first IoT developer platform before IoT was even a thing. David has held numerous technical evangelist roles at companies such as Dragonfly IoT, Riverbed Technology, and Sun. He studied computer science at the University of New Mexico and has a BA in technical writing from Columbia University. And our other presenter is Jeff Eden, Jeff is a senior product manager at Particle, driving the device cloud platform strategy for deploying professional IoT products at scale. Having previously spent time as a software engineer in security and IoT, Jeff brings a unique skill set to creating an experience around the tools developers need when building IoT products. Jeff is a graduate of Northwestern University and kickstarted his career with Deloitte as an engineer in their technology practice. Uh, this is David Simmons from Influx Data, and I just wanted to sort of give a little bit of background on what we're dealing with here, who Influx Data is, and, and sort of what, what the overall problem is that we're trying to solve. So when we're talking about the Internet of Things, I, I'm almost tempted to start calling it the Internet of Data because when we're instrumenting the physical world, we are going to be generating a, an absolutely enormous amount of data, 11.5 uh, zettabytes of data by 2020. And that's really an unbelievably large amount of data to sort of get your hand, head around. Um, I've tried many times and it, there's just too many zeros in a zettabyte. Right, it's a billion terabytes, it's a trillion gigabytes, and there's just too many zeros there, right? Um, so it's a lot of data, and dealing with that data is really what we're going to be uh, trying to trying to deal with, especially when it comes to IoT. So for an IoT platform, you know, we're we're also dealing with a segmentation between devices and sensors at the very edge, and you know, that's that's why particle is here right and then gateway and cloud and enterprise applications which is where you send your data and do your data analysis and actually make use of that data um jeff if you want to step in here at any time please do um you know i'm yeah. I, you know, sure this is yeah, really a group and, uh, a group thing thanks thanks david and uh you know, it's it's always a pleasure to to do presentations with you, and and uh, I'm I'm really excited to share how uh, you can use Particle and Influx together to really do some pretty special things. So I think this is a nice diagram to show some of the major buckets of functionality uh, and behavior. Uh, that you need to build your end-to-end -end IoT product, and uh, I, I love that that slide that David showed with you know the the many zettabytes of data uh, that these IoT devices create, uh, and and it is a massive challenge to figure out um, what to do with that information, how to analyze it. But I often like to start with uh, you know perhaps something that people take for granted is how that data gets collected in the physical world in the first place and securely and reliably sent uh, to the internet, to the cloud, uh, to be able to integrate with the enterprise applications, some of the uh, uh, database solutions that uh, providers like Influx offer. Uh, and, and that's really, I think, where Particle plays uh, quite nicely on, on the edge side of this graph, uh, making it super easy to be able to collect information, uh, sensor readings, uh, and deploy connected solutions in the physical world that make the rest of this graph or this diagram as you go from left to right uh, even be possible. So, um, you know, keep these four kind of major buckets of functionality in your head if you are considering uh, approaching building an IoT solution. Right. And so, you know, this, this, as we're talking about an IoT platform, what we end up talking about is sort of this this idea of a data layer, right? Because you've got 
you need connectivity for your devices, for your gateways, all the way up through the cloud, right? You need device management, you need security. And, and those are really the things that, that Jeff's been talking about and that, that Particle handles for, for you on the device side of things. But then what you need is really a data layer, a data services layer across all of it. And that top layer of where, how do you collect your data? Where do you collect your data? How do you handle your data, store your data, and, and manipulate, analyze, and display your data is really where, where the Influx platform plays, right? Totally. And, you know, I, I, I like how this, this captures the fact that if you're dealing with something like security in the world of IoT, it really spans the digital and the, and the physical world. And it's not something that you need to think about at one of the layers. Uh, it's something that you need to think about at, at all of the layers. Uh, just, just like data, just like device management, just like connectivity, um, that's really where a lot of the, the meat and potatoes of the challenges of, of bringing a successful IoT product to market, um, each one of these components uh, spans the entire stack of IoT, which is really a, a, an interesting challenge. Yeah, it really is. It's and and a lot of these challenges that we talk about with IoT, they're not isolated to sort of one part of this of this deployment. An IoT deployment is really a, a full stack, and by full stack, I mean really full stack from hardware device at the very edge all the way back to cloud and enterprise application. And these sorts of problems apply across that entire deployment and not just at one layer or another, right? So we're, when we're talking about you know, collecting data, the Eclipse Foundation did a survey of IoT developers earlier this year and 62% of data collected for IoT is time series data. That's really sort of the overwhelming amount of the data that comes in from IoT is time series data, right? And that's because really IoT data is time series data, right? It's a it's a reading that's time stamped, which is time series data. It's a reading at a time and it's not like you're going to go back into your database and update those things. They are what they are when they happened and it's just a constant stream of them, right? And so you really want to see what's going on with that data as it's coming in and over time. And so, you know, this is sort of a graph of what that looks like as time series data is coming in over time, right? You've got different, different sensors of thermostats and various things and their readings and you're graphing them over time, if that helps to sort of understand what time series data is. And, and really why it applies to IoT. I, I think that it's not just time series data applies to IoT, it's that IoT is time series data. So when we talk about data services, we're really talking about these, these real buckets of what you're gonna do. You need to collect the data, you need to do streaming and analytics of that data, you need to store that data somewhere, you need to be able to see that data in whether it's visualization in, in a single pane or multiple dashboards, and you need to be able to control not just that data, but can also control those devices, right? And being able to do all of those things is what gives you a data platform, right? You, you can't just do one of them. Yes, you can store your data someplace, but unless you're also able to analyze it and take action upon it and visualize it, then it's not really a, an IoT data solution. It's just a, a data storage bucket, right? So why influx data? And this is a sort of our overall architecture of what influx data's data platform is. And I can go through this, you know, very quickly, and when we'll talk in depth a little bit more about some other parts of it, and what we call this is the tick stack and you'll notice that each of the parts of the major parts of this uh, spell out tick so that's really why we call it the tick stack and telegraph is our high performance data ingestion data collecting engine and that's right now what we're, we're going to we'll talk about today in terms of integrating with particle is 
using Telegraph in one of its plugins, and we've got over 160, I think it's over 190 in the next version that's coming out, uh, agents, plugin agents to collect data from different sources. One of those sources, and that's the one we're talking about here today, is the particle data collection. And Telegraph feeds that data into InfluxDB, which is our storage and, and engine for time series data. It's actually the database. It's the it's the workhorse of the whole thing. It's what makes it all work. And it is a database that is built, purpose built from the ground up just to handle time series data. You're not going to use it for your transactional database. You're not going to use it for a document store. It really is a, a purpose built tool for time series data. And you'll notice that Telegraph is sort of feeding data into two places at once. And I'll come back to Capacitor uh, at a later point, but Capacitor is our real-time streaming and data processing engine. It allows you to uh, do streaming data analysis and take action, whether it's alerts or you know various other action based on that data. Right, and you can also take that data and then send it out to things like machine learning or you know, other alerting frameworks to handle what's going on with your data. Uh, Chronograph is our user interface for charting and, and dashboards so that you can actually see what's going on with your data. Um, and that's really the, the entire data platform. Telegraph and InfluxDB are something that you can deploy well, actually, all of it is something that you can deploy sort of end to end across your your IoT platform to give you this this data layer. So, you know, our our pitch is that we are really purpose built for time series data. We are able to ingest just very large volumes of data in the millions of points per second do real-time queries on large data sets so that you can actually look at and manipulate large chunks of time series data in real time. You can actually set eviction policies on your data so that you're not keeping data around forever to keep you from having to store that 11 bytes of data, right? You, some data is going to expire as it's no longer useful. Um, allow you to do things like downsampling your data, which means you can take sort of rolling five minute averages and store those for longer periods of time than you would store sort of the, you know, the millisecond level data that you're collecting on a, on a device by device basis. Just to, uh, that's always something in particular about Influx that has blown my mind. <laughs> uh, the ability to change the grain by which you look uh, at, at a data set and when you care about uh, some very micro level readings that happened recently, you can have that granularity, but you know when you're looking at uh, what has happened over the course of a month or a year, the ability to quickly be able to zoom out and see a high level summarization, when you're talking about the amount of information uh, that is going to be generated as more devices come online, the ability to quickly uh, change the grain at which you look at your, your, your data is, is super uh, useful and that's, that's a, an amazing uh, part of what makes Influx pretty special and, and optimized for, for IoT. Well, and, and along that line, actually, one of the things is that, you know, for historical data, you may not need that really highly granular millisecond level data. In fact, you probably don't. Exactly. And so paying the storage costs to keep that around is really not cost effective. What you really want to do is keep the overall trend of your data. So you may need a five minute, you know, you may need the millisecond level data of the last 30 days, but for the last you know, 90 days, you really only need a rolling sort of five minute average. And then for the, over the course of the year, you really want to, you know, like a, a, a one hour average, right? That keeps you the overall trend of your data and you can see where things happened and, and you'll see the same trends in your, your data, but you don't have to store as, as much data and you can automatically expire the, the millisecond level data after 30 days so that you don't have it hanging around. It's just, it's automatically rolled up into these five minute and, and you know, one day rolling averages and, and the highly granular data is expired. Got it. Yeah, that's, so, that's great. 
now we'll now it's really going to be uh, um, you know Jeff's turn to to talk. So Jeff, just let me know when you want me to advance the slides, and I can, sure. I can do that for you. Sure, absolutely. So uh, at Particle, our 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 mission is to help bring the physical world online to solve problems before they happen. So that might be uh, you know detecting that there's a problem with the elevator uh, and dispatching a technician to replace a small part before the elevator breaks catastrophically uh, and there's uh, a service outage requiring maintenance for many months. Uh, that could be automatically refilling uh, some sort of uh, consumable uh, that a consumer uh, needs uh, and, and doing so before they ever uh, realize that they, they ran out of dog food or they ran out of coffee or they uh, 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 needed uh, something uh, in the future. So, uh, you know, we're, we're focused on any opportunity to leverage the power of connectivity to bring intelligence to the physical world to solve problems before they happen. Um, and something that I think really uniquely positions Particle is that we're not afraid of hardware. So we we describe ourselves as a full stack IoT device platform, and that word device I think is really important. Um, if you if you've worked in the world of IoT uh, or embedded uh, firmware or any of the the related areas in the past, you, you know hardware is hard, and you know that it's a really really tricky problem. Um, and something that, that makes Particle really special is that we offer solutions all the way at the edge um, and actually have our own hardware development kits that you can use for prototyping. And we have uh, connectivity modules that you can use to transition to when you're, when you're ready to make the move to uh, production. And those are more industrial grade. They're, they're ready to be deployed at scale. Um, and we actually offer solutions for uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, cellular connectivity. And most recently, uh, we announced our, our upcoming generation of hardware uh, will be powered by a mesh technology, uh, the same technology that's used by uh, Nest and, and the related suite of products that, that they brought to market. So um, we offer you the hardware, we offer you the connectivity to help uh, help you bring the physical device online in the way that makes most sense for your particular use case. So for instance, if you're, if you're doing more of an industrial uh, uh, project and uh, perhaps you're tracking an asset that moves all the time, you probably want to choose cellular um, to, to take advantage of the fact that there is ubiquitous connectivity uh, outdoors. If you're doing a smart home product, on the other hand, and you're very cost conscious and you know your customers are as well, um, it might make sense to, to do Wi-Fi. Um, and, and now, you know, bringing in mesh to the kind of portfolio, um, if, you're, if you're dealing with uh, perhaps a sensor network, perhaps you operate a parking garage and you wanna add a sensor to each parking space to be able to understand um, what spaces are taken and what spaces are still available, uh, Mesh gives you the opportunity to create a local network um, that, that you can track uh, very high granularity of, of data in, in the physical space. We, we couple the, the hardware and the connectivity um, with, with, a, with a software piece as well. So we provide an IoT device cloud, which is really a suite of features on the, on the software side that uh, help bring those devices online and allow them to communicate with the internet securely and reliably, no matter how many devices you have in your fleet. We have uh, a variety of different developer tools like IDEs and a CLI and, and mobile and, and, and web SDKs. Uh, to help you um, really take advantage of the data that's coming through. Uh, and then we also uh, enable you to build your own IoT applications. And that's really where the um, connection with uh, Influx comes into play. Uh, we offer a feature called integrations. And through the use of webhooks, you can essentially stream the raw data coming from the devices uh, to any uh, sort of service uh, that you that you need outside of the particle ecosystem and influx is is a great uh, partner for us because it, it's a really great yin and yang relationship where um, particle helps you collect that data and solves a lot of that really 
uh, uh, difficult hardware and connectivity side of things um, and, and allows you to collect that data and communicate it securely without you really needing to reinvent the wheel. And Influx gives you that full suite uh, of a data platform um, to allow you to take advantage of that data, to store it, to analyze it, to visualize it, um, to run some stream analytics on it. it it's, it's really a, a, a nice complement to, to what Particle provides. So um, with that, I, I think that, that provides an, a nice overview of what Particle can offer. Yeah, and I love your hardware. I use it all the time. In fact, I'm in town and I'm probably going to have to march over there and, and see if I can't, you know, locate some of your new hardware to, to play with the, the mesh stuff. I've been looking forward to that for a while. Yeah, and this is just a, a, a picture of what uh, one of our IoT development kits uh, looks like. This is our Photon, so this is our Wi-Fi development kit. So when you get it, you get uh, a breadboard, you get some useful components uh, to create some sample projects. We have some really nice documentation and tutorials that helps you get started. Um, we really want to provide the best developer experience possible to folks building IoT products. Um, and they're, they're relatively low cost. You can pick up a Photon for uh, $19 and our, our mesh hardware actually, we've done some uh, cost reduction there and it's, it's even less expensive. So uh, the idea is to help you get started um, very easily, low friction, and uh, take advantage of some of those device cloud features to help write the, the code for your device over the air firmware flash, uh, your development kit to, to get started and, and, and really create uh, the, the, the prototype uh, that will eventually lead to whatever that end, end goal that you have with IoT is. Yeah, you know, like I said, they're really cool. I've got piles of them in my office. I use them all the time. So why, you know, why particle and influx, right? Part of and and a lot of this you probably have gathered already, right? It 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 probably dawned on you that you know we we do different parts of this stack, right? So particle is really good at the devices and the and the software that runs on those devices and securely managing those devices in terms of firmware and and data collection back to the particle cloud and particle does that really really well and what we bring to the table is the okay so now you have your devices and your your you know that part of your iot deployment built you're securely managing your devices you can flash firmware to them over the air and you can have them sending your their data securely to the particle cloud what do you do with that data now right how do you make use of that data and that's really the the influx side of that is put your data into using a telegraph using telegraph and connecting it to the particle cloud you can collect store process analyze and then react to that data that you're collecting in your from the particle side of things right did you want to add to that jeff no that's a that's a great overview so now let's get sort of into the the meat of this of you know how do you do this with influx and particle so again these slides will be available so it's you can go back through at least you know the this portion of it that's really kind of a tutorial and and work your way through this but the first thing is to install telegraph somewhere um there's a you can, I run Telegraph in a uh, digital ocean droplet, their smallest droplet, I run Telegraph there, and that's what collects all of my particle cloud data. But you can deploy Telegraph on almost any uh, piece of hardware, whether it's an embedded board from ARM, like a Raspberry Pi, or uh, you know a, a cloud instance of Amazon, or Azure, or you know Google, wherever, Wherever you want to deploy Telegraph, you can pretty well do that very easily by just, especially on Linux, you know, doing an apt get or whatever your package manager is to install uh, the Telegraph agent, right? And then there's a simple configuration in the Telegraph configuration file to turn on this, this 
this particle webhook, and you'll see the the you know in that portion of it, it defaults to a service address on a port and and a path. So you would have a a, a URL of you know your host colon 1619 slash particle, and you can change the path, you can change the port, and and, and restart Telegraph, and you're now listening for messages from the particle cloud from your devices to put that data into InfluxDB. So the next thing is how do you get your, your data from the particle cloud to InfluxDB? And we tried to make this as easy as possible by making it a webhook, right? So if you go to your console in you know your particle console, you'll see that you have some choices of integrations. Um, you know there's an Azure IoT hub, there's the Google Cloud platform, and then there's a webhook. And so you can really just choose the webhook and you know build your webhook to point to your Telegraph, and this this URL isn't quite right because it's missing the uh, the port designation that we talked about. But it's a post and it's a JSON, and you're going to want to change a couple of things in the um, in the JSON. But basically, you're going to use the default JSON, and then you're going to add this influx DB, which is the, actually the uh, influx measurement into which you're going to store all of this data. So that's going to be the measurement where all of your particle data is going to go. And if you've used InfluxDB, you'll know what a measurement is. But basically, it's a it's almost like a table in a database of where your sensor data will go, right? And then you'll need to actually add some code to your device. And the the way you do that is to format a JSON on your device that contains the data that you want to send to InfluxDB. And Influx has this, you know, you, you can tag your data with tag values that you can then group your data and search and sort by. And then there's the actual sensor values themselves. And so you can see in this JSON format that, that I've outlined here, you're going to define your tags as one part of the JSON, you're going to put your values into another part of the JSON, and then finally, once you've built this JSON, it's a simple matter of doing a particle.publish for this data, and that pushes that JSON object securely to the particle cloud, and since in the previous step you configured your particle cloud instance to handle data from this, you know, this sensor type data, to send it to your Telegraph instance, it will immediately be forwarded on to your Telegraph instance. Yeah, and, uh, and just, a, go ahead, David. Go ahead. Okay, just uh, just well, wanted to make say here's a, you know here's an actual, what it looks like in in the actual code. Yes, yes. I, I just wanted I just wanted to make make clear the kind of flow of of how the, how the data moves through the different systems here. So what's on the screen right now would be. Uh, application firmware code that you would write to run on the microcontroller of the particle device that you have. Uh, and we do a lot to kind of add some syntactic sugar uh, on top of, you know, writing raw C, C++ uh, code. So this particle.publish is one of our communication primitives that makes it super easy to securely send uh, a blob of data from the device to the particle device cloud. Uh, and so you see, you give your, uh, your publish a name, you, you pass a data payload and then we, we mark it as private uh, so as to publish to our private event stream as opposed to making this public to anyone listening to the particle public firehose. So once it gets to the particle cloud, that webhook then essentially pipes that, takes that data and it just moves it right along uh, to the to, to the webhook destination, which is the the um, uh, the telegraph endpoint that uh, that David was was mentioning. Right. Thanks for thanks for clear, uh, clearing that up, Jeff. That's a that's a really great explanation of sort of how things flow. So once you've done all that, you can go into your Influx DB instance, and I'm using Chronograph here, their data explorer, to show that I'm looking in my Influx data sensors. I'm looking for 
the host that it's coming from, and I can see that my temperature data is now flowing in from my particle device, right? So I can actually go into my InfluxDB instance and, and explore through the data schemas to see that the data is coming in live. And as I'm doing that, you'll notice that I select what data and I'm selecting the measurement that I'm storing it in. And then I'm selecting the, the value, the, the sensor reading that I wanna see. And then you can see in the bottom there that it's actually live charting that data so I can see what's going on with it. And here's an example of, of a sort of a dashboard that I've built of sensor data that's coming in from, you know, that's an edge device that is collecting data both on the edge device that it's running on and it's showing the connected sensors to that. So I've got some sensors and you can see that I've got a, a bunch of different UI elements to show me what's going on. So I can look at a glance and see what's going on with my sensors and I've got some dial graphs so I can see what's going on right now as just sort of a, you know, what's the temperature? Okay, it's 82.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But then I have a, a strip chart next to it that I can see the, you know, the past 15 minutes of data, I can see a trend of what's been going on over the last 15 minutes, right? And these dashboards can be really handy for seeing what's going on with your deployment. And I can, not only can I see what's going on with a single device, but I can also aggregate data in these so I can see what's going on with, let's say, all of my temperature sensors across my deployment which is really handy to have yeah and just to kind of paint the picture of you know how one might use it for a product they're building you know imagine if uh, we're talking about cold chain and you're moving uh, a very temperature sensitive asset across the country right um, if you have uh, a particle device that's that's monitoring the temperature and you know that you need to keep it below a certain threshold, uh, you're, you're constantly collecting that data, you're sending it to influx and monitoring it in real time, being able to visualize it. Uh, and through some of the other uh, parts of the tick stack, as David has mentioned, you might also be able to set up an alert that says, you know, if the temperature ever surpasses a, a certain threshold that might put that asset uh, in danger of spoiling uh, or becoming damaged in any way, uh, you, you can you can alert the the the, the person uh, who's on call to take care of that. You could perhaps uh, turn on another IoT device that might be a fan to to add some additional cooling uh, to the physical environment. Uh, th there's quite a lot of possibilities to create very tangible business value, um, really just by connecting uh, these tools, which can be done in you know in the matter of minutes. And that's a really good point, actually, because you know the the whole purpose of IoT and instrumenting the world around us and instrumenting all these things to collect data is to actually be able to do something with that data to take action based on that data, right? So if I'm collecting temperature data on an on a on an asset that that's that's traveling, and I'm not monitoring it with the ability to do something about significant changes in that in the temperature, then really why am I collecting it, right? I, I'm collecting it so that I can know what's going on with it, but I'm also collecting it so that I can take some action if it goes outside of a, a reasonable boundary, right? And that's the idea of being having your data be actionable. And, and that is also part of the tick stack, as you said, that's the capacitor side of things. I can generate alerts based on data, incoming data, right? And, and, and so, another angle of that is, you know, the the, the very high granularity data coming in on a regular basis is the raw input for machine learning and being able to create models around the, the data that, that enables future uh, uh, product improvements, enhancements, intelligence at the edge. So, um, you know, that, that is another really key part of being able to collect and store this data to, to run uh, analyses later that, that can be used uh, you know, perhaps to, to create uh, a feature like preventative maintenance where you can look at a few heuristics and when those things kind of happen in, co in coordination around the same time, you can come to a conclusion that a problem is likely to service, uh, surface itself in the near future. So uh, there's also that angle in addition to the, the you know, more instantaneous real-time alerting component. Right. That's a, that's, a, that's a really good point as well. And we do have integrations with machine learning platforms that you can basically just plug in to send your data to a machine learning platform. Um, there is, for doing this whole you know, integration with uh, 
particle and influx db there is actually a tutorial that is on the particle docs site so if you go to the particle docs site and you look under integrations you will see a whole section on influx data and how to how to set this up you know in a step by step tutorial to go through and build this whole solution yourself if you want to try that So, you know, this is uh, what we do here. We are really for developers and builders of IoT applications, right? Easy to use. We're all open source. You can go download the uh, Influx stack for free and run it. It's super easy to deploy. It's a, a matter of a couple of commands. I've done a couple of videos on how long it takes to install on both Linux and on Mac OS. And I think my video is about three and a half minutes long for, for a complete installation and getting your first dashboard up. A little longer to do the integration with the particle side of things, but in order to get the platform up, it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. We've actually uh, trademarked the phrase time to awesome because we're all about sort of making, making it easy to deploy the platform so you can spend your time on handling your data and what do what you need to do with your data rather than spending all your time getting your platform set up so that you can you know just collect your data right you've got better things to do than just set up the platform which is really to deal with your data I think it's question time awesome our Did first question is is particle open source that is an excellent question. Uh, the short answer is yes. There, there are tremendous parts of our stack uh, that are open source, including uh, on every one of our devices, we, we run what's, what's known as the Particle Device OS, which is essentially what makes that connection between the device and the device cloud, the internet, uh, really seamless. And it allows you to do things like over-the-air flash uh, your fleet of devices and, and coordinates that connection between the physical world and the digital world. That entire repository is open source. Uh, a, a variety of our SDKs, including our JavaScript SDK, our iOS SDK, our Android SDK, that's all open source. Uh, and, and we really, uh, we, we, we try to um, engage in the open source community as much as possible, um, in, including, uh, in fact, our hardware. So, so we open open source all of our design files, uh, the the Eagle files, and, and and kind of the hardware layouts and the data the data sheets um, for our development kits, our our Photon and Electron uh, development kits. So, uh, the short answer to that is is absolutely yes, and I think that has what has been. Uh, what has resulted in uh, you know a lot of developers enjoying working with Particle uh, because it is an open ecosystem that that uses open source technologies and, and contributes to uh, that that sense of transparency that's that's super important uh, in the world of uh, uh, engineering uh, both both hardware uh, and software today. But uh, you know I think the really interesting part about Particle is is specifically the hardware piece and, and the open source of a lot of uh, what we do on the hardware side. Um, which is which is uh, not something you see every day. So yes. Great. Our next question is: Does Particle have its own C-based language like Arduino? That is another excellent question. Uh, and the answer to that is yes. So um, in fact, the the same. Uh, kind of uh, layer that sits on top of uh, core, core C language that Arduino uses, it's called wiring. Um, it's, it's basically a firmware API. Uh, that is the same technology that's used when you program particle devices. So um, essentially the same code that you can write for an Arduino, you can write for a particle device. Now, there is some minor porting that needs to happen, but uh, all in all, there, there are many more similarities than differences. Um, and Yes, the, 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 the programming language that you write on particle devices in firmware is, is C++ and uh, very, very similar experience to Arduino. And we did so purposefully, right? We knew that there was uh, a very large Arduino community uh, and they had done a great job with creating their uh, developer ecosystem around 
uh, how, how you write logic for your devices, and we wanted to make that an easy transition for people to make. Yeah, and in fact, a lot of the same Arduino, you know, device level drivers for, for, for various, you know, I squared C and other devices that you would use for another Arduino device. A lot of those are the same things that are available for Particle. You know, I honestly, when I was first started developing for Particle devices, I didn't know that there was any difference between Arduino and Particle because it's, it looks exactly the same. You just don't develop it in the Arduino IDE, which is actually a good thing if you ask me. Right. The, the Particle web-based and or even desktop-based IDE is much better than the Arduino IDE. Well, thanks, David. That's very nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question is, can Telegraph pull or accept unsolicited data? Um, you, so Telegraph can be both a, a pull or a push receiver. So there are various plugins for Telegraph that can accept, you know, data pushed to it, like in the case of the, uh, the particle plugin. And then there are other plugins that can actually uh, do you know pull data from a source as well um, there are as i said there are, you know we're getting close to 200 plugins um, and they are of all different types uh, things that are basically hardware level and can pull from the hardware on which telegraph is running to you know pull based or push based uh, plugins and those are both there have, there are both input and output plugins for telegraph so telegraph can output to influx db but telegraph can also output to a very large number of other uh, data syncs so you can send your data to multiple places not just influx db awesome our next question is why coap and not MQTT. <laughs> I always chuckle when I get this question. Um, you know, honestly, this was learning that I had to do um, when I first joined because that that decision was was actually made before my time at Particle. Um, from what I can gather, uh, I'll say this: um, both Coap and MQTT accomplish largely the same thing. Uh, they they provide a a way to get information from the from the physical world to the cloud. Um, at the time, we made the decision to use Coap um, because it, it it best fit our needs uh, for what our devices need needed to do and some of the technical requirements that that we had. Uh, and we still feel that Coap is is a, is a wonderful wonderful solution. Um, now, there's no question that since that time. Um, MQTT has certainly gained a lot of popularity, um, and it, 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 it has become um, uh, very, uh, very widely used. And, you know, there's, th there's nothing that I can say that is critical of MQTT um, or uh, provides a, a very strong argument, you know, why one is better than the other. What I will say is I, I think both uh, work and, and they, their differences are, are, are relatively nuanced, um, and, and I would re reframe uh, reframe uh, the perspective in, in terms of, uh, you know, where is the value coming from? Uh, and and I, I, I quickly move on from, you know, that decision to uh, what I feel is, is, a, is a more important discussion around what is it you're trying to build? Uh, what problem are you trying to solve? And COAP will, will, will solve that problem just as well as, as MQTT does. Right, and I can add that if what you really want to do is publish your data over MQTT, ultimately you can have an output from Telegraph that will push that data onto an MQTT broker very simply. Awesome. This looks like the last question we have. If you have any more questions, please post them to the questions panel. The question is, are InfluxDB and Particle a good start for my IoT career. You want to take a stab at that one, David? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of biased, right? Because I, I use particle hardware all the time and I work at Influx Data. So, but, um, you know, I think that 
for ease of development, ease of deployment, ease of maintenance of hardware-based IoT solutions, uh, um, Particle is is a really hits a really sweet spot, and for a lot of people, um, you know, there's I don't think there's any one solution that's perfect for everything, but for a very large section of what people want to do in IoT, the the Particle hardware side of things is you know hits a lot of those things because it's got things like over the air software deployment so you can manage the fleet of hardware and you know over the air with firmware updates and and rollout changes to your firmware very easily for your whole fleet of of iot devices and it manages the connectivity securely and and really pretty effortlessly and then when it comes to you know, know what you do with your data which is ultimately what you're trying to do with an IOT platform is collect analyze and deal with data um, you know I've been doing IOT for a really long time and and I have not found for me anyway a, a, a better way to deal with my IOT data than influx data just because it's so easy and it's so powerful and it can it can take in so much data so effortlessly, and then it gives you this ability to build dashboards really easily, so I can see what's going on with my data, and I can analyze it, and I can, you know, I can spot trends in my data very easily, and I can add things like alerting, so that I, you know, I don't miss things in my data, I don't miss anomalies because I'm not sitting there watching the dashboard, right? When something happens, I get alerted by it, and those are all really powerful things and you, when you pull all that together into sort of one solution that is really you know both hardware and data analysis it, it's 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 a really easy thing to do and and being able to do it quickly having that uh, what we call that time to awesome is is really key and i think particle adds to that time to awesome by making the hardware side of things very easy as well I was just, I was just going yeah, to say the same thing. I, I love um, what David and, and Influx coined the, the time to awesome phrase. And I think, you know, uh, in many ways, Particle is is from the same cloth uh, and, and tries to optimize for that getting started experience, really thinking through what's important for uh, developers and, 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 and folks who are getting started on what, what, you know, has traditionally been a pretty difficult journey kind of wrought with challenges. Uh, and obstacles to overcome, and and removing as many barriers as possible to help you be successful. Uh, and I think through this philosophy, uh, two really um, you know easy to use, flexible, uh, and opinionated in, in in the best possible way. I think platforms have have kind of arisen, and you know obviously we are biased, but um, you know I, I think you'd find a lot of people who who tend to agree with with that perspective. Um, it's funny though because when I first heard the question, I thought it was referring to perhaps uh, you know wanting to work at one of the, or two of those uh, of those companies. And I obviously I can speak for Particle that you know we are uh, growing, and I, I encourage you to check out um, our uh, careers page on our website um, to get a better sense of you know you know if you are looking to kind of work uh, in in this space uh, uh, to to be able to pursue one of the opportunities there. Um, so we, uh, we're always looking for, for smart, talented people. I will add that we are too. We are, we are hiring engineers and all sorts of positions at Influx Data, and we love hiring you know, smart, driven, dedicated people who, who are really interested in this stuff. And, and so feel free to you know, look at our careers page, reach out to me if you want to talk to me about it. I'm happy to, to you know, talk you through what's going on here and and all of that we'd, we'd love to have you awesome that does look like it was our last question is there anything you guys would want to add before I close things off thanks thanks everyone for uh, for joining I know you know middle middle of the day can be tricky but uh, hope you enjoyed the the content and um, you know uh, you can always find me on Twitter. Um, my handle is, you know, at Jeff Iden, E-I-D-E-N. Uh, and, you know, if you have any questions, definitely uh, follow up. Um, 
and I, I really look forward to hopefully some of you taking the, the learnings from this and uh, building something special. So thanks again. Actually, we do have one more yeah, question. And, and I'll, I'd say the same thing. Okay. The question is, we have some smart POS devices we want to manage from a central portal. We want to monitor battery level, temperature, printer paper, etc. Is Particle a good fit for this? <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's a that's a really interesting use case, and I'm I'm glad we're we got a a I got the ability to talk about a specific problem, right? Because sometimes a lot of a lot of the value of this can get lost in the abstract. Um, and so what what this makes me think about is essentially a, a retrofit project, right? Uh, where you have kind of an existing solution in the in the market, uh, and and you want to take that and add the connectivity piece to it, or add the ability to collect certain certain uh, data and send that send that to the cloud. Um, and we've we've done that many times before. Um, my favorite story here is actually we actually work with a customer in the oil and gas industry specifically uh, uh, in, at gasoline stations. Um, the ability to monitor the gasoline that is stored in large tanks underground uh, is absolutely vital, both uh, for safety reasons and also compliance uh, reasons to be able to print out reports and send those uh, to kind of regulating agencies. And um, the, the technology that is, has been uh, become really popular uh, is, is a technology from I'm not joking, the 1970s, and it's still being used at almost every gas station today. And what, what this company did was they took that, you know, very uh, well-adopted tool and they retrofitted it uh, with uh, a particle electron to be able to, instead of having to physically go down and trigger a receipt to be printed to mail to a, a regulatory agency, um, all that data now that just gets sent up to the cloud and, and is dealt with in, in a digital fashion. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is is, is essentially the same, same kind of uh, application where, you know, we work well with if you have an existing solution and you kind of just want to add a little bit uh, uh, on top of that if you're trying to collect certain temperature readings or as you said, uh, understanding uh, some diagnostics like battery information, um, that, that is something that, that Particles is very well suited to, to help you with. And the last kind of shameless plug that I'll put in is um, what's been really useful for some of our customers is to work with our um, Particle Studios team. Um, and Particle Studios is essentially the professional services branch of, of, of our company. So they basically help those who need a little bit of extra help on the embedded side, on the hardware side, on the manufacturing side, take a concept uh, and, and integrate it with um, you know, a particle uh, solution um, that, that results in a really nice finished product ready for, ready for deployment. So um, you know, depending on what your, what your needs are and what your skill set is internally, uh, I'd encourage you to, to check that out as an option as well. That was a great answer. Thanks for that, Jeff. Um, and and before we close, I just wanted to sort of reiterate what Jeff said about, you know, I love doing these uh, these webinars with Particle because we're we seem to be such a good fit um, in terms of an IoT solution. Um, if you have questions or whatever, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at David G S I O T. Um, and feel free to, to ask questions later, reach out in any way, and I'm happy to talk to you about, you know, IoT in general or, you know, how IoT and Particle and Influx Data all work together. I really appreciate everybody coming in today. Awesome. We actually do have a couple more questions that came in. The next question is, can a multivariate analysis be done in the influx database absolutely you can uh, pull data from a number of different uh, you know readings in the influx in your influx DB and analyze so you can do things like I can get the temperature and the pressure from you know the ambient temperature in the room and the and the pressure in a valve and a reading from let's say the you know the um the air conditioning vent whether it's open or closed and i can look at those three pieces those three readings at the same time to decide that maybe it's too hot in there and there's too much back pressure in the air conditioning system 
system. And so I need to use that vent to open the vent and both cool that room and release the back pressure in the system. So you can pull data from multiple readings in your influx DB and, and take action based on all of that data together. Wonderful. The next question is, with this platform, I build gateways for LoRa, Sigfox, Zigbee, et cetera, and integrate data through MQTT providers. Is that, was that the extent of the question? Yes, I'll read it again. With this platform, can I build gateways for LoRa, Sigfox, oh. Zigbee, et cetera, and integrate data through MQTT providers. That's, that's uh, sorry, I didn't hear the can I part of that. I thought it was a statement. Um, so, okay, I'll start with this. Uh, right now, Particle hasn't invested in uh, a hardware solution that is based on LoRa connectivity, on Sigfox connectivity. We have made the strategic decision to invest in another type uh, of, of connectivity technology that um, solves a similar set of issues, which is the new uh, versions of LTE cellular connectivity that uh, are have, have already started to rapidly come online. Um, and, and this is a new band of LTE. There's a few of them actually, um, but the two most popular ones are LTE uh, M1 and LTE NB-IoT. So, uh, that was a decision that was made based on what we thought uh, made the most sense for our product portfolio and our customers at the time, mostly because of the, the lack of a need to deploy new physical infrastructure. So what do I mean by that? Um, there are already many uh, LTE cellular towers deployed all over the country and the world. Uh, and essentially any uh, place where there's existing LTE connectivity for um, you know, more high bandwidth devices like smartphones, um, will have the same coverage for, for these new bands uh, of, of, of LTE specific to uh, IoT. Um, that being said, you know, there, there still are, are uh, good use cases for solutions like LoRa. Um, I know Sigfox is another uh, player in, uh, in that space. Um, and and stay, on, stay on the lookout, actually. There, there is a new, new product that um, we're going to be announcing uh, shortly um, at our upcoming conference, uh, Particle Spectra, that should help make perhaps uh, integrating a, a particle hardware-based solution with uh, some of these other, uh, um, uh, other IoT technologies that don't necessarily use the same networking technologies, the same hardware technologies, and make them all kind of work seamlessly together. Uh, that's all I can say for now, uh, but if you if you check out our live stream of our conference, it's it's gonna be on October 3rd. Um, a new product will be announced that, uh, that I think might be interesting to you. Great, and with that, I'd like to thank David and Jeff for a great presentation today. I'd also like to thank today's sponsor, Influx Data, for providing the DZone audience with a great webinar presentation. And lastly, thank you to everyone who joined us today. We hope you learned something new that will help you in your developer career. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.